Hi, welcome back to another podcast with Mr. Hagen. On this podcast, we're going to uh, look at different kinds of money. So on a previous podcast, we looked at the functions of money. Now we're going to look at the different kinds of money. And before we do that, we just want to define this uh, term, intrinsic value. Intrinsic value is uh, when an item that's being used as money would have value even if it were not used as money. It has some intrinsic function to it. So even if you didn't use it as money, it would still be, it would still be valuable. So let's, let's look at some examples of this. Um, some examples of this would be, well, what we call commodity money is money with intrinsic value. We'll, we'll look at some examples of that. Commodity money is money that has intrinsic value to it. Okay, so any money that has intrinsic value, anything that's used as money that has intrinsic value is called commodity money. And one example of this is cigarettes. Cigarettes in the past have been used as commodity money, particularly in uh, prisoner of uh, prisoner war camps uh, in World War II, etc. Uh, cigarettes were often used as money. They were used as a medium of exchange uh, to buy and sell. Uh, to buy and sell goods and services. So, so people from the outside would sneak various different goods and services. Uh, chocolate, I think, was was a favorite. Um, these things, uh, people would sneak them into the uh, concentration camps, into the war camps, and so forth. And people would buy these things with cigarettes. So cigarettes emerged as a form of commodity money. Now, the reason I say it's commodity money, I don't recommend smoking, but, but people could smoke them if they wanted to. If they didn't use it as money, they could smoke it. It had some, some other intrinsic value, uh, some intrinsic value to it. So cigarettes have been used as commodity money. Another one would be gold. Gold is used as a has been used for much of history as money, but it's a commodity money. And and what made gold so useful uh, throughout history is it's it's easy to carry, it's easy to measure, it's easy to verify, um, and and it's reasonably easy. I don't have this here, but it's reasonably easy. Um, to to, uh, to to separate it in into parts, uh, to break it down into smaller parts, uh, so that you could have uh, smaller denominations of money. So it was divisible. You could divide it into smallest part, smaller parts, and uh, and then have smaller uh, forms of money. So. Uh, when we went on the, when the United States and much of the world was on the gold standard, uh, then gold was being used to to kind of back up the money. So so that's that 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 gold was acting as commodity money. Actually, it's commodity money if you use the gold directly for money. Uh, for much of for for much of the um, more recent history, gold was used to back our money. Yeah, it was called the gold standard. Now, gold I'm saying is commodity money because it has intrinsic value uh, even if it were not used as money. Uh, gold in the past has been used uh, to fill uh, for fillings for teeth, uh, used to make you know necklaces and jewelry and whatever. So it has value beyond just being used as money. So gold would be a form of, of commodity money. Uh, here's, here's kind of a silly one and, and I I'm going to apologize that I do not know how to re to, to uh, pronounce this, but on the island of Yap, somewhere in the in the South Pacific, they have this uh, very different form of money. Uh, these uh, very large stones are used as money. Um, so, so just my point is that there's really been some some interesting things that have been used as money uh, throughout history. These really big stones, uh, fish hooks have been used as money, all kind of various different things that have been used as money. Now, what about today? Today we do not use a lot of uh, commodity money. Uh, instead, what happens today? Most most nations use what we call fiat money. Fiat money, and that's money without intrinsic value. Value. That's money that does not have intrinsic value. Typically, this money that doesn't have intrinsic value, and that means there's no value to it or very little value to it other than being used as a medium of exchange, um, 
typically this is established, whatever it is, is established by money, by government decree. So the United States government stands behind the U.S. dollar. But the U.S. dollar is really, it's fiat money. There's nothing behind it. The only thing that makes it worth uh, anything is that we all agree to use it and the government stands behind it. Uh, that's it. There's, there's, there's nothing else. You can't take your dollars and turn them in for gold. I mean, you used to be able to turn your got dollars in for gold, and then that gold acted as a commodity money in a way, but, but not anymore. It's fiat money. Um, there, there is another example of fiat money is some of these uh, cyber uh, cyber monies that are that are starting to develop. Uh, Bitcoin was an example of this, and uh, so so Bitcoin really doesn't have any intrinsic value. And interestingly enough, it's not established by any governments. Okay, it's a it's a private currency. But but typically, fiat money is is typically backed by 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 a government. So this would be the British pound, uh, the euro, the dollar, the Japanese yen, etc. These are all fiat money. There's nothing behind them. Um, it's it's just that we all agree to accept it and to use it, and typically the government is going to back it. Okay, so those are our two types of money. You have uh, commodity money, which has intrinsic value, and fiat money that does not have intrinsic value. All right, this has been Mr. Hagen on uh, another podcast. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you on the next podcast.